All right. So in the last video, we talked about how most of this stuff happened. And now we're going to just finish up here with a little more information on how to uh, use hard surface stamps and height to add additional detail that you can then feed back into the generators so everything looks nice and cohesive. It's a little, like a little crunchy if I were to hop over to a 4K version of the textures, which will take just a second here, it will look better, so I'll let that load in. All right, so you can kind of get a, an idea of what's happening. So the way that this is set up, it's it's moderately, I mean, it's, it's very simple, it's only a few steps, but it's just a little bit more complicated than some of the other things here in Painter are, and I think a little bit less intuitive. You really have to have somebody kind of show you what's up, and that's what happened to me. I just looked it up on YouTube. Knowing that it was possible helps. Okay, so we've got this layer of hard surface stamps. So if I come over here and I go to normal, and I turn on my hard surface stamps, give it a second to load those in, you can see here uh, they, they, are, they are painted on, essentially. Looks like I might have caught the wing on that one. Uh, so up top the M key, we can go back, and the way that you do this is you just go over to the shelf and you grab a hard surface. Well, I guess first we'll grab a brush. So we'll get a brush, we'll get a basic hard, and then uh, it's going to have some stuff kind of built in. I'm going to go ahead and delete the alpha, and then we'll go to hard surfaces. And for the brush here, all we really need to worry about is the normal map. And we can just, whatever, one of these will be fine. You drag it over there, and then you can simply uh, drop it onto the uh, the surface of your geometry here. I'm actually gonna drop this down to 2K so we can see what's going on a little bit closer to real time. But that's the idea. So you can, you can use these things here to give the illusion of more detail than actually exists. And there's, for some reason, they're not showing up. It's something probably trivial, but typically you would see the icon of whatever it is so that you could get the orientation correct. Also, if you wanted to um, have symmetry turned on, you can just click this little button here and assuming your red line is where it should be, you can go ahead and click and and you will see uh, your stuff showing on both sides, which in this case is probably desirable. Okay, so, but I'm gonna, you wanna be careful with it. Like it's, I think it reads as being kind of a hack if you have too many of them in there. So it's, you know, it's like a, a, a one or two is cool, but more than that, and it starts to get whatever, kind of kind of overdone. So uh, keep it in mind as an option. But here's the thing that's important, right? So like what we want is it needs to show up in the the grungy stuff of whatever material it's sitting on, assuming you've got some grungy stuff. So I think it's this guy. Yeah, maybe this one. Probably this one, because that's where it, where it hopped around. All right, so we've got this Mask Builder Legacy. So I can click on that. I just want to kind of confirm something. Uh, would be down here. Yeah, okay, cool. So some of these generators will have, this is a smart mask. Some of them will have this feature and some of them won't. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what to do if it doesn't have the uh, ability to add it in, but they've got some old legacy stuff in here and, and probably that's that's what's going on. But before we get there, what you wanna do, so this is our hard surface stamps layer. I've, I've added an anchor point. So you just right click on it and you just hit add anchor point and it's going to just inherit automatically the name of the layer so just make sure that stuff is all kind of set up properly and then go and find whatever grunge generator you want the normal map to talk to and you got to do a couple things the first thing is down here you'll see oh where is it you got to add it in to a couple of spots so definitely down here let me go ahead and so that's mass normal. I'll just delete that. So it'll normally look like this, micro normal, and you can see it went away. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to my anchor points and we'll just go ahead and select hard surface stamps. You can do the same thing here with a height map, which is just black and white. So it's not quite as smart, but it uh, functions similarly. And then you go to the micro details and you expand that and you just need to set on use micro normal to true. And it'll go ahead and uh, once it's done thinking, hopefully turn that back on. What did I do? Oh yeah. Um, finally, so this is our micro normal. So the reference channel uh, should be set to, in this case, normal. So once that's done, it'll go ahead and update and give you that lovely grunge. So that's, that's how you do it. You create a layer. This is a paint layer, by the way, not a fill layer, because we're, we're adding like individual elements in here, not just like a solid value. Give it a anchor point and then into the generator, the mass generator for the grunge that you want it to talk to. You need to make sure that you Enable micro normal, go to the anchor points, grab the hard surface stamps here, which is the normal layer. The height panels is, is going to be a height map, as I mentioned earlier, and then just set your reference color to normal. 
and make sure that in the micro details it is set to use micro normal true so anyway a few steps there but not that big of a deal hopefully and once you've run through it once or twice it's uh it's pretty easy to just repeat now the other one is my height panels so we're going to turn that on so this one is probably i don't have the visibility on for it because i don't actually need the visibility to to, and to get what I'm looking for. But this is kind of what it looks like. It's just little white lines that could probably, honestly, probably be done a little bit, bit better. They feel, in this case, it's okay, but once it's actually applied uh, to the surface, it, it feels a little a little wobbly just because of how that geo is going. Uh, depending on what the angle that the camera is looking at, it feels a little inconsistent, but whatever. It is, after all, meant to be viewed from pretty far away, and I think it works better in that context. So same exact process here. We're gonna go ahead and add an anchor point, except in this case, I'm not that worried about the, the thing itself. What I'm, what I'm gonna be looking at here is the mask. So you could probably have just made this all, it's just hard to see. I guess you could probably come over here and go to like height, but anyway, probably overcomplicating it. Two different versions of the same idea. In this case, because this is where my value change is, that's where I'm gonna put my anchor, right? As opposed to on the layer itself, I'm just putting on the mask. And then same exact thing. We're gonna come over to the mask build, builder legacy here and here is micro height so the way that's going to look is i'll just click on this we'll go to anchor points uh, height panels mask because again that's kind of what the the anchor points name is and then alpha behavior i'm not entirely sure that doesn't seem to make any difference uh, but then we need to go up to micro details we need to enable micro height and once we've done that it's kind of cool let me actually set this to 2k so that the response is reasonable okay but you can see it it don't look that great but that's okay Okay, so we're going to hop over to micro panels and then whatever, just using, let me go back to the brushes, something that we can easily mess with. And you can just go ahead and start painting it. I don't know if I've actually hooked it into the white one, but I know that I put in the red one, but let's see, why isn't this working? Because I'm in, I'm in a race. So let me go to, uh, to brush, we'll go ahead and make it white. All right. So like instant panels. And you can see here, I didn't actually add it into the white scrunch stuff, so it's not paying any attention. It just happened to be that I don't have any of this stuff happening in the white stuff, mostly because I just wanted to kind of do proof of concept in the red and, and that was that. But now that we've got it, maybe we can just, just to really hit this home, I believe it was Rust Occlusion, Mass Builder Legacy. So first thing we're gonna do is go to Micro Height, grab our height panels, and then we can come over to uh, the, where is it? Micro details section. And that's already set up. So now you can see we're getting this big white line and some, some junk on the outside of it. And I think that's probably what I was looking at with this crunch marble vents. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so with this, it's actually worth mentioning, the procedural reaction to a straight white line is very procedural and that might be a weird thing to say, but you can see like it's got the exact same thickness of of crap around it all the way around because it's like it's being presented with the exact same scenario in terms of like it's black and then it's white. So it just does whatever the thing is and it's very fake feeling, right? When I say procedural, what I mean is it's clearly there's like some algorithm that's just like making a decision and the inputs are constant. So the output is constant. So what I've done here is I've got this grunge marble veins, which is just a a, a fill that I've set to multiply. So if I if I if I uh, set this to normal, it's basically taking everywhere that it's black in my fill and multiplying out any values beneath it. So you can see we're getting that kind of broken up. So it's like marginally successful. It was good enough here, uh, but it still looks a little bit kind of consistent in terms of how, how thick it is. So whatever is so maybe you could add like an additional subtract here or, or multiply that would that would break it up even further but anyway i haven't done that for the white one but you get the point now hopefully of why why that is nice because if, if it's missing we end up with just like this very consistent uh, very procedural feeling thing and then also you can kind of see it's very white over there so i have this other height panels layer it was some way that i i dealt with it i can't remember exactly what it was but it wouldn't uh be too difficult to figure out except that we've got like uh one second left before 10 minutes and that's that's the limit on these things for, uh, if i'm if i'm doing it right so anyway that's a lot of information and if you have any questions uh you're welcome to uh, reach out to me or you know just look it up on youtube that's pretty much what i do and speaking of youtube 
this is where all of my playlists live. So this one right here, the Game Art Pipeline, is going to be the deep dive into Substance Painter. 3D Foundations is kind of the intro course. So like if you're new to all this at this point, I'm not sure why you would be watching the last video and be new to it. But anyway, 3D Foundations is going to start off with some basic Maya modeling. It's going to expand into doing bakes and painter using simple models and then marginally more complicated models. And then it's going to do some Fusion 360 work. This is going to be um, a, a sort of a level two ZBrush class, and this is the extension of that. So this is just general techniques with hard surface uh, modeling in ZBrush. And this is modeling the high poly that I used for this guy. And then uh, probably by the time you're watching this, this course will be sitting over here somewhere as well. If you're looking for a more introductory course with ZBrush, this one will probably be pretty useful. It's um, not like from square one, but it will cover a lot of the basics with sort of organic sculpting. And then if you're like really wanting to do a deeper dive at the intro level for ZBrush, if you go to my website, uh, there is an introduction to ZBrush course in the tutorial section. That'll that'll start you from square one. So um, anyway, there you go. That's uh, hopefully that all is useful. That's a lot of information. And um, yeah, I think if you're if you're able to really onboard this workflow or similar workflows that will give you a, a, a similar result, uh, you'll be in really good shape if the goal is to get a job as a game artist. So anyway, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And uh, thanks for taking the time to watch this series. Take care.